Hi everyone and welcome back to the It's Good to Talk podcast brought to you by Student Minds at Canterbury Cross Church University and then hosted on the Society Podcast YouTube channel. Um, so this week we're dealing with uh, something that's come up uh, in the BBC actually. It's one of their um, dedicated parts of their website, talks about mental health, uh, disability, things like that. And there's this new idea um, that they're trying to uh, bring in, they're trialling down in the southwest about usage of funds and how they're dealing with um, people that are suffering from either a normal uh, physical illness or mental illness and how they're going to redistribute the funds. Um, so I am joined today by Tom Davey. He's a regular over on the Kick to the Crotch podcast uh, and he has been uh, appeared on one other podcast for um, It's Good to Talk when we talked about stress in uh, the workplace because Tom's uh, self-employed. Um, and so obviously uh, with this uh, particular subject that we talk about today it is something that has got worse during the uh, pandemic and that's why uh, they're thinking about this change and obviously last time Tom was on we talked about how the pandem pandemic had affected him so it kind of goes hand in hand. Um, as always guys anything that we say we um, does not reflect any other association, organization, or fellowship that either myself or Tom has. It doesn't reflect the views of Student Minds at uh, Canterbury Christchurch University, or Student Minds as a national charity, or Canterbury Christchurch University, or Canterbury Christchurch uh, Students' Union. It's also opinions right now. They could have changed from yesterday. They may change again tomorrow. That is merely the nature of being human. Uh, it's also possible that myself and Tom may uh, swear during this, may use coarse language. And obviously there could be sensitive uh, information, sensitive um, discussion on certain things because we are talking about mental health that may come up. There won't be another warning before anything that is discussed. So please do keep that in mind uh if you are continuing with us if not you think you might be upset or um annoyed anything like that please do click off now um so yes tom welcome back and um yeah with this one it's it Thank seems you. a bit like um they're calling it radical so the obvious first thing here is the bbc has put this forward as a radical plan that aims to tackle health inequality I think half of the issue with this article and half the issue with the thing itself is the fact that we even think of this as radical. The fact that the media, one, the media, because you can't, I can't quite tell whether the media is trying to knock it back as it's too radical or, my God, isn't it ridiculous, ridiculous that this is radical? Um, and obviously, so the, the idea of it is that this, um, you know, Dr. Peter Brindle, who is uh, medical director for... Um, uh, clinical effectiveness is talking about a redistribution of um, of assets and, and um, resources in the southwest so that people with severe mental health issues get dealt with before people with um, uh, so, so sorry we cut off a little bit there so the people with um, physical illnesses who aren't as uh, severe are pushed back down the queue now i don't know about you but my first thought in that is yeah it, it's almost like i want to do the um the billy eilish song of duh like what we're dealing with people that are more severe so that people that aren't as severe don't get seen as quickly like you know, yeah of course what the fuck like i don't know about you like what's what's your kind of take on it um, pretty much the same. It's kind of like I was reading for it earlier as well, and I was just like, okay, and? Yeah. <laughs> and this is shocking and radical how. It just it makes common sense. Yes. So, you know, if someone, if someone has a more serious thing that's going on, you see to that before yeah. you do... It's basically... I don't see how it is radical in any way, shape, or form. It's, it's so it's, weird. It's, yeah, there's, it just... I don't get why it's called radical at all. <laughs> no, it's, you know, the, the, the whole thing is, it's been a proposal by um, uh, Bristol, North Somerset and South Gloucestershire Clinical um, Commissioning Group. The fact that, I mean, it's, it's been, the idea is that it's this massive undertaking. Now I'm sure there's obviously, because people have budgets and everything like this, um, you know, but we, the idea is that they're, they're talking about they want to bring their services back to normal and they want to get them up and running as well as they were before COVID-19 um, and they can't do it straight away. So what they have to do is prioritising. Now, now, 
I've known quite a few nurses, still know some nurses and doctors. That's fucking triage. That is normal. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's almost as if they've gone, you know that thing that all of you people to do with mental health have been campaigning for and suggesting for since time immemorial. Yeah, we're going to do that, but we're going to make it sound like it's a ridiculous plan. <laughs> Because they're basically just going, I mean, the thing, I think the reason it's come up now and the reason it's kind of being potentially looked down upon is because it's COVID-19. And I think some people want to try and suggest that, oh, well, if COVID-19 is still around, then we've got to use all our resources on that. And it's like, yes, yes, you do. But the whole point is, it's people that are lower down on that list, that aren't urgent, that don't need the help immediately. You know, it's someone that's got, I don't know, a slight injury that's chronic, but it doesn't actually, you know, flare up all the time, is the what is being is now being dealt with um, six months after the person who is a suicidal depressive and about to throw himself off a roof. And you kind of go, yeah, probably a good idea. Um, because the, yeah. you know, the, the numbers of... of um, I mean, the numbers just of men that, that um, commit suicide in this country, it, the biggest killer of men under 40 is suicide. So it's mental health. So the idea that we're just going, oh, yeah, but we've got to, you know, we've got to just deal with the, um, with the physical side of stuff is insane because actually it's, it's dealt with by the mental side. And so if we're going to try and help anyone, then we've got to deal with, the thing that's killing the most people that's that surely that's the whole point of the nhs is to to stop people dying in general and to look after the health of everyone so you go for the thing that kills more people under uh, more people for that more men under 40 in the uk it's a suicide and it's it is really weird it's just yeah it's very strange um but i mean so how how do you read it do you i mean obviously you don't see it as radical but do you do you read this as kind of um as just you know the government society this group not taking mental health seriously do you think it's just them being outdated in their language is the media taking the piss i mean what what are you, what's your thoughts i mean i'm not entirely sure to be honest it's again as i was saying it's like i don't see how this is radical in any way shape or form it's like who's saying it's radical mm. it does, i don't get who who is the one who's saying that this is new radical and strange or however you want to put it and it's just like no, as you said, it's basic triage. It, it just, yeah, I, I think, I think it might be partly media because again, it's a news. I hadn't even heard of this until it was mentioned in the article that you shared earlier, and I was like, yeah, okay. And I, was like, I thought, okay, I saw the headline. I was expecting some shocking new thing of, oh yeah, we're going to change this, that, and the other. And then I kind of read it and went, but that's not what I just. It, yeah, I just. I don't get it. <laughs> How is yeah. it any way, shape or form radical? The only thing I can think is because the, the current system is basically first come first serve. And that's a longstanding bit of guidance that comes from the Royal College of Surgeons. And so of course, you know, it's an austere body, the Royal College of Surgeons, and they're the ones, you know, that do a lot of golfing. Um, but, <laughs> you know, the, it's, it, see, it almost seems like we're calling it radical because it, it dares to go against a, um, a died-in-the-wall in the kind of societal norm in the NHS when how many years have people been going, you know you need to do more. You know that you know m mental health isn't being dealt with enough. Mental health kills more people than um, obesity in certain age ranges. You know, it's... It, and we, we just don't take it seriously. And it seems to be that there's an immediate shock reaction from some people of like, but you can't change that. That, that would mean that we're, we're overhauling the whole, the whole of the Royal, Surgeon, Royal College of Surgeons ideal of, and it, it's almost like that. It just reminds me of um, when I was on the council. So anyone that doesn't know, yeah, I'm older than you guys. I've been around for a while and I was a district councillor for the Barton Ward, which is where Christchurch University actually sits. And I was, um, I was a district councillor there um, for four years. And one of the first times I went into the council offices, 
I didn't know my way around. And so I called through from reception to planning because I was trying to help someone with a, um, an issue with planning. I didn't really know it. I didn't end up being planning committee. I'm not good with that stuff. Give me licensing. But I needed to get through there. I needed to talk to someone. And I, I picked up the phone, rang through, and I just went, you know what? Can you come and get me? Can we get lost? This place is a maze. Please come and get me. No, yeah, of course we will. Count, uh, of course we will, uh, Councillor Parsons. Um, that's how you ever tell who's actually high up in an authority as well as whether they use your title. Because if they don't, they either don't give a shit and they're really low, low down, or they don't give a shit because they're really high up. Um, but uh, and, and I just went, oh, okay, cool. I'm in reception. I'm wearing um, my my hoodie. I've got a red hoodie on, and their response, word for word, was a hoodie, in that kind of shocked. You know, I was a fucking 22 year old wearing a hoodie. Yeah. And it, this kind of strikes me as a similar vein of like, this is kind of, this makes sense. This should have made sense 30 years ago, but it does make sense now. Um, we need to do something about it. And a societal backlash, the BBC, maybe the Royal College of Surgeons, this commissioning group that's looking through it. Um, it <laughs> It just seems to be that they've gone, oh my God, you, you dare to, to, to challenge what we've, we've put down? Like, like it's down in fucking stone. It's, it does seem a little bit like that, that it's, it's almost a shock value reaction from them rather than being a real story. I don't know, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, like, as, as you just said, like, it's more of a shock value than a real story. Like, I was, as I said before we started recording this, I was like, I was reading through it and it kind of read like the standard, you know, um, scientific and like the whole, how you're responding to with an essay of going, you tell them what you're going to tell them, you tell them what you're telling them, you tell them what you told them. It was like just this entire article to me read in that format of this is what they're saying about doing. This is what they're saying about doing. This is what we just said they're saying about doing. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, cool. Where's the rest of the information? They, so they want to get it into people's what, heads. What, yeah. What no, more no. is there to this story? Because... There's bugger all here in this article about yeah. what you're doing. It's it's a weird it's a weird thing. Like they're suggesting that um, they want to get it into people's heads because and and give it that label of shocking statistics, radical change, and they're just using buzzwords over and over again, which are used way too often when we talk about mental health. We we talk about mental health and. And then we want to try and get it into the, the, the media or we want to try and get it discussed more. And when people do actually do it, suddenly then, ah, oh, but it's radical and it's shocking and we can't talk about this. And it's like, fuck's sake. We finally started to get a much better dialogue um, in terms of um, uh, in terms of mental health in general. And they kind of go with the idea of, Oh, yes, but, you know, we can't talk about that. We must push it back. I mean, the simple statistics that they actually, uh, that, that, that you can think about in terms of um, mental health, if we compare it to, say, um, somebody that's low-level um, issues with um, a physical issue, so, you know, chronic injury, or there could be something that's more severe that they just don't realise is, and so that's why they're lower down. You know, the likelihood of them dying on there is not massive that you know statistically there will be some that die on it but it's about 20 percent or lower that will then have issues there but the care quality commission have actually said that during the pandemic the rate of people with learning difficulties has more than doubled the national and uh, the national yeah, doubled nationally in recent months is increased by 134 percent compared to before the pandemic so it's <laughs> we've got we've got on one side we've got yeah you have an issue and it may actually be more um of an issue than we realize and you know some of them are going to be incredibly bad and i'm sure that myself you and very other uh, various other people would go how dare you have missed this and i'm sure i have said it before but at the same time if you're looking at pure numbers of people you're saving it's 134 percent of before the pandemic, just in these past few months. Because of course, mental health, I mean, this podcast got started because of the pandemic, because mental health has become so important. 
in the time of uncertainty because of unemployment, because of not being able to see friends, family, being isolated. I mean, how many people out there um, with just simple, um, I say simple, but with, with learning difficulties? And I, I, I shouldn't have said simple learning difficulties, but you know what I mean? It's not something you think of as being higher up in terms of uh, mental uh, health issues, but learning difficulties. How many of those people that are severe that now have issues with looking after themselves because they've been isolated? Um, they already, people with learning difficulties in the UK already die 15 to 18 years sooner than those without learning difficulties. That's a normal statistic that we have from outside of any of this. And now we're adding on things like isolation um, being cut off, potentially not understanding the severity of COVID-19 and more likely to catch it. And just, just so many things that come into it. Um, but society doesn't like that because it doesn't fit and we like to have a go at the nhs that's it's, it's a british past uh, pastime we have to the countries that don't have the nhs we have one of the best um uh, medical systems in the world to those in the nhs it's the worst and you're there kind of going fucking go to america um you know but but we like to have a go and so oh yeah but they're they're doing this and it's it's wrong because people that with real problems because i still hear that nowadays i still hear the real problems or it's in your head all that kind of bullshit um and it's this does seem this does read a little bit like an article that should have appeared in the daily mail or at least in the comments section of the daily mail you know it's it's one of those it's one of those yeah, things it really does yeah. Um, I mean, the, the weird one is, is that there's actually one bit where um, Dr. Brindle, who is, you know, the, 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 the chief who said earlier, that he actually found that the stats about how many people had died of earlier disease were incredibly shocking. Um, and then afterwards, compounded with what we already knew. It's like, what? So you already fucking knew then? Like, why wasn't this an issue already? Like, why, why the fuck has it taken a yeah. global pandemic and the additional deaths of God knows how many people for someone to go, you know what, when we come out of this, hey, maybe let's switch around a little bit and just, and just, just help a couple more people that might be gone before, you know? It's, it's insane because... If we looked, so for instance, if we if we took a um, a simple thing in terms of NHS and said, um, let's talk about um, in conjunction with mental health, and we looked at both me and you, we are far more likely to die from our from any mental health issues that we have than we are from any physical ones that they could bring up because of our age. We're both under 40, white male, we're more likely to do suicide. And it just seems insane that we don't want to deal with it or, or our response to it is radical. Yeah, it's, I get it, it kind of boils down to the whole, just people not talking about it as, or not wanting to talk about it. As, the same issue every single time when it comes to like mental health is that people for some reason don't want to talk about it because it i think it makes people feel a bit weird and they don't like feeling weird kind of thing which true it it should make you feel weird because it's something that needs to be talked about but you're not used to talking about it so it will make you feel weird and like uneasy because you're not used to it it's the same with any other you know, conversation about any other thing it's like why do guys always have like when it comes to women's health? Guys always go, oh no no no, I, got, I don't. So, yeah. so and what? It's a health issue. It's not a. <laughs> yeah. It's not like something that you should be. You should be able to talk about it the same way you should be able to talk about cutting your hand or having you know dropped a cup on your foot or something inane like that. It it shouldn't be such a big thing that you need to go off and have specific. Oh, we can only talk about it when there's an issue with it. Yeah, which is what ninety percent of the time happens. But like, like, you know, like, uh, I hate to do the whole like American like school shooting thing, but how many of pe people in those cases it's, it's only become an issue for mental health when someone goes gets hold of 
a family member's gun and then goes up and shoots up a class full of kids. And yeah. then suddenly everyone's bringing, oh, it's a mental health thing. When it was like months or weeks beforehand, they didn't give a shit. Yeah. There was, they didn't care about it. It was, like, it was a non-issue. Yet yeah. the second something happens revolving around it, then suddenly people take care and take notice. You should also take care and take notice. It's, it's part of your daily bloody life. <laughs> it's, 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 and you get so many people that, um, especially in this country, and I've, I've, had it, I've had it myself, where people will not believe in any of it until it directly affects them. Like mm-hmm. suddenly a loved one, you know, and a loved one is, is suffering from it. Oh, and now they're the biggest advocate. And you kind of go, so I, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm liking the fact that you now have passion for it, but at the same time, fuck off. Because you, you don't get to do that. You don't get to go, we, we need an actual discussion, not, not a bandwagon. We want an actual discussion on things because bandwagon doesn't help anything because bandwagon just goes, let's throw money at this. Let's, let, and that's not how you fix it. You can't, it's not, mental health isn't a broken bone. You don't just mend it. It's not like that. And it's far more reaching. But of course, as you say, we don't like to discuss it. And we, we're, far more, um, we're far more happy with the idea that we can just fix it. And so if we can just, yeah, you know, we'll just, just do that and we don't have to talk about it anymore. Just, 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 just yeah. no, it, over it, there. It over there. Because it doesn't have a cookie cutter answer of square in square hole. It just kind of, people just don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because uh, it's not because, as you said, it's not a it's not fixable in easily fixable. It's like, yeah, of course it's not. No, you know, your brain is one of the most bloody complex parts of your body. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we go. It's not like we can get um, a normal. Um, we we can't exactly get um, a normal uh, computer to even simulate what the human brain is. Um, but we're just going. Yeah, well, if we spend enough money, we'll just we'll just solve it. It will just be done. It's like, no. It, fucking want um but we we just don't like it and we don't like to um we just don't like to talk about it in general and the thing is we, we we don't like to um it's not just government it's not just um you know doctors things like that it's as, as i said i mean how many times what, what's the normal um greeting in england and what's the most unanswered question in england you all right mate how are you yeah, how are you? You're right. How are you? The same kind of, you know, that's what you, when you see someone, you don't say hello. Hello is meant to be the, the greeting, but it's not. No one fucking says it. Everyone goes, how are you? You all right, mate? No one ever fucking answers that question. And if they ever did, huh. everyone would just be like, oh, I asked you a fucking life story, mate. You know, it's, that's what we've kind of come down to. And we've, we've not, we've not really, uh, progressed beyond that and we so, so we just um it's it's just it's a shitty way of looking at it and we don't understand it and because we don't understand it and we know that we can't understand it we throw labels at certain things so I've, i did a, a discussion on um uh, mental health in society with um the president of the psychology society at university and we we're talking about depression um at one point and how the way that depression is dealt with in the public eye is depression is this that means you must be down you must be upset you must be potentially suicidal and probably angry and you can go well none of them have to be the case you may just be numb not taking enjoyment in stuff that you've done before feel lethargic they or none of them again and you could just be happy but something weird so many different times but again like you say with the cookie cutter it's the case of well no but that's that's this is the cookie cutter this is the depression cutter that's the that's how we deal with that one that now the other one doesn't make sense um and and then then we get things like this where because it's slightly outside of the norm. Oh, we're going to spend our money a little bit different because we want to help people. We've just seen that there's a statistic that backs up the stuff we already knew. So we're going to change it a little bit. And the first thing out is it's shocking. It's radical. And you're going to go, what the fuck? This should be what's happened across the entire country. This should just be, what this actually should say is trial run. Trial run happens in Southwest. Yeah. And if it was, we'd be going, no. cool. Good to see they're doing something. But instead, what it says is it's radical. We've got shocking information. And you're like, but no, it's not. And no, you don't. It's, it's simply something that is progressing within the NHS that should always progress in the NHS that we hope will 
actually get better and we start to talk about mental health. Um, I don't know why it's in the Southwest, whether that's just because that they're the ones that have got their budget, budgetary reviews now. Um, I would hope to see that places like London, Birmingham, Manchester, Leicester, the places that actually have the mental biggest mental health issues, those are the ones um, that they actually, um, and it's because um, a lot of the time it's in uh, impoverished areas, which is why all of those cities have very high um, rates of poverty in, in certain areas, um, especially Manchester and Birmingham. Um, and so obviously they have higher than higher issues of mental health, mental health uh, issues and um, uh, also uh, learning uh, disabilities because they're left behind a lot of the time. And so some of the stuff you can actually find that the learning difficulties may not even be that bad. It's just that they've been ingrained, whereas we should be dealing with it from the start. Like they do in Finland, where we just deal with education and deal with things properly from day one, where it's all joined up rather than, you know, pulling it apart and then going, oh, it's broken. Fuck. Which is, seems to be how we want to deal with it at the moment. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, obviously it would help if, if um, more people, and I don't know I'm, I'm guilty of this with, with my friends as well, but I'm, I'm, it's, it would be far more helpful if we could just talk to, talk to our mates as well. Because obviously they're the first point of call. But the problem is, is that the society of which we know there's a problem has taught us not to talk, especially if we're men. Especially oh, yeah. if we're men. Um, that's why the rate of suicide is so much higher in men, because um, it's not that, and that's not to take away that women have the same issue. In fact, in things like autism, there's far more undiagnosed um, females with autism than there are men. So there's a lot of people suffering a lot of silence there for um, females. Um, the problem for men is, of course, is that we're in a society, a patriarchal society that's told men through, basically through toxic mas masculinity that, no, you've got to be the hard nut. You've got to be the one that doesn't show emotions, mate. No, 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 you can't, you, you've got to be there for her. You, got, you, you can't be, you can't have any of those fucking sissy tears and shit like that. No, you, can, you, can sum yeah. the, you can sum it all up with one sentence, man up. Yeah. One phrase, that's it. That yeah. one phrase sums up the entire thing. It was like, you know, man up, grow some balls, stuff like that. Yeah. It's like, even, even when we, in the early 2000s, when we started to, because um, it wasn't earlier than that, really, when we started to look at actually helping um, women in society in any kind of form, really, um, we can pretend it happened earlier. It fucking didn't. But what was our way of doing it and trying to make it that, um, that uh, girls could look after themselves and women could look after themselves? We started saying, woman up. Which wasn't any fucking better. It was us trying no. to do something. Because society didn't get it. And it's the same thing. It's that society kind of going, um, I don't know, this one with a W-O on it? Yep, yeah, we'll go with that. It doesn't fucking work. Um, but... It's, it's that broken bit in society that just wants to, wants to deal with it like that. And yeah, man up is the most toxic of to toxic masculinity you can think of because how many, how many people have just not said their issues? How many people have not no. talked about something because, oh yeah, but they're, they're, they'll, they'll send me away? Huh? I was reading, there was, um, there was an article. It was one of those online ones I read and it was the... Um, Again, the whole millennials are killing this industry kind of yeah. one of those bullshit arguments. But it was whole, um, how millennials aren't doing it, uh, specifically mostly aimed at men. It was like, millennial men aren't doing enough, like they're not learning how to do DIY and stuff at home. And there was a brilliant comment right at the end of this article where someone put, yeah, sure, I might not be able to put up shelves, but at least I can talk to my daughter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how many fucking repressed people? There's a reason that millennials are the way they are. is because... Like, I mean, if you look at the rise in things like dark humour through millennials and Gen Z and actually some Gen Xs, then it's because the generations before were so fucking repressed that millennials, Gen Xs and Gen Zs have had to kind of fight back against it with fucked up humour. Um, and yeah, yeah, I've seen the DIY one a lot. And I've always got to go with a Nick Knowles quote of, just because it's called DIY doesn't mean you do it yourself. Get someone in. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the guy who's just literally because you can, worked. Doesn't mean you should. Yeah. He's, like, he's literally worked on a show called DIY SOS. And he's like, no, I would never do it. He's been doing it for like 20 years. And he's like, no, why would I do it? I'll just hire someone. 
I mean, hire someone who is who can do it. Specialist in the field. Yeah. It's the same. Oh, I've got a broken arm. I'm going to set it myself rather than going to a doctor. Fuck off. <laughs> That's called the American um, medical system. Um, oh, yeah, they don't have much trust for you. <laughs> there's 36 million of them that are completely without any kind of health care. So, yeah. Oh, duh. Um, <laughs> ten Again, you know, more yeah, DIY. Yeah, DIY. Do it, do it yourself. So just because that's the name of something doesn't mean you have to follow it. No. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's very much this kind of, this idea now that um, millennials and Gen Zs don't do manly jobs or don't, or, or, or aren't mothers. You know, it's all those kind of very stereotypical, oh, women aren't mothers, they should be. I fuck it, I can't remember what I was listening to the other day. I was listening to someone, I really wish I knew where it was from, but it was this bloke talking to a woman that was on the panel. I don't even know what the fucking show was, but he was talking to this woman on a panel, basically going, you're lying to yourself. You'd be far happier as a wife at home with the kids tonight. And I was like, do you want to die? What the fuck yeah. is the matter with you? Like, I just, I didn't understand. It, it was, and it was like, say, toxic masculinity had just, it was seeping out of him. I was like, where the fuck did your views come from? Because the guy wasn't that old. He was what? 50s so he's a gen xer so maybe some of the toxic shit from the boomers the the most you know un unearning fucking generation ever um yes gen <laughs> yes boomers that is you it's not millennials um <laughs> um but maybe it came from it came from from that i don't know but i was just there just going you're completely it was that very kind of 1930s, 1940s viewpoint of, well, no, 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 I'm the man. Therefore, I know best yeah. for the woman. Shut up, dear. And it was like, what the fuck? Even the guy that was interviewing was there just going, what the hell are you on about? And it's that kind of bullshit. The epitome of mansplaining. Yes. He was literally going, because she just went, well, what am I? She, yeah, because her response was, what am I doing here? I'm here on the panel tonight. And he's like, oh, yes, but you're just lying to yourself. You, wouldn't you fight? You know you'd be better off at home. You know, your kids, um, kids there just going, oh, hello, mum. Hello, mum. Like, Mate, I want to fucking hit just, you. What just, because you're a woman, just because you're a woman doesn't mean you have any like, potentially maternal instinct at all. Or yeah, want my, to, or should need to. My mother is a classic example of that. <laughs> Bobbed I mean, off when I, you know, left me, left me in a bloody, um, you know, I was like less than a year old, living with her in a flat she shared with someone else. Obviously, you know, obviously mental health issues were involved because she was a drug addict and stuff. But yeah, her, her instincts, yeah, she was like, I'm going to go out and party for a couple of like days or week and leave the kids at home on their own for days at a time with nothing to eat nothing just yeah just buggered off that actually that actually takes that back even further what uh, what could have happened if this society we have nowadays which is still fucked on mental health but some knowledge was around when your mum was younger and potentially somebody just fucking sat down and just gonna go you know what just just other ways <laughs> and just talked to it like, there's, there's so much stuff could be avoided oh yeah. they, they did they did oh okay she, she's, she, yeah, she, 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 um, like everyone does the whole the black sheep of the family kind of thing. But yeah, she, you know, she, she grew up with the same people I grew up with. I grew up with her mum and I grew up with my grandparents, the same people who brought her up. She had a, and my uncle, her brother. And I had no issues, didn't have any issues growing up with them. Grew up, you know, as far as I'm going to say, fairly all right. And everyone who knows me and has met my grandparents go, yeah, they're cool. They're, you know, they're lovely um, people. And so that, she was that, that one odd person who decided to, as a teenager, rebel and go and live in a commune and do drugs, get drunk. And she did so many things, like so many different forms of drugs, that she now has to have injections to stop herself hearing voices. Drug induced. Not... And has been, you know, yeah. And I mean, she's, she's a classic example of like the health serve, like the mental health system not working. Yeah. Because she. Where were they? Put through it so many times and been released on her yeah. own cognizance or whatever it's called. Oh yeah. Every fucking time. The so amount of stories set, I've heard. She set a building a lot, you know, she set her flat a light with fireworks in a bath. I mean, the, the amount of and times I've heard about it. And then released her again. Yeah. And then recently she was up, somehow managed to get a caravan or something and go up north. She can't drive, she hasn't got a license. Where the fuck did she get a caravan from? Um, 
went up there and yeah clearly she's got to the point where she's like oh it's getting a bit awkward so i'm just going to set the caravan alight and you know get put in for a while and get looked after fed and stuff but at the same time clearly having just broke and it's like yeah so she's doing it for a the reasons of it's making it easier because she doesn't have to think and worry about stuff but at the same time she's hearing voices in her head and they're releasing her they're, Which yeah, I mean, and then they're releasing her back out to the public and i spoke to the there was a lawyer involved who got in contact with me because normally when this used to happen, I was under 18. So my grandparents had to deal with it. Hmm. Because I'm now over 18, it's me as next of kin that has to deal with it. And so I kind of literally was speaking to her and she said, oh yeah, and I didn't even realize they'd released her until I saw her walking around town weeks later. And I phoned them up and went, what the fuck? <laughs> Why was she released? And they're like, oh, well, she seemed to be doing better and you know, we could only hold them so long. And I was like, right. Cool. You know, she set when she did you read the case file where she set a building? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's got form for that. She's done it previously, and you've decided to let her walk out. You know? yeah. <laughs> the mental health system is is broken. Um, it do, yeah. We have a thing of either just releasing people when they shouldn't be released. We keep in people for too long. So I think it, I think it comes down to because they're not funded enough. They it's not even, it's not even that. to keep her in. But it's not even, I don't even think it's funding. I think it's understanding because I've literally known people who shouldn't be in, um, in the facilities that have been kept there. People that should be there that aren't. And then people who have, people who have then had issues, had an emergency team called out to them and immediately just gone, I had a chat for five minutes and gone, oh yeah, well, what you're thinking is normal and just, Bear in mind, they've had an emergency team out to this person. Written off. And it's just like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Like, what the fuck? And th this is the problem. Because again, it's, it, Finland have this um, sorted so much easier because with, especially with, um, we don't seem to do it. Well, I think potentially we need to talk to Portugal as well because um, I think in terms of mental health and drugs, because in Portugal, all drugs are legal now. Um, but no one's talked about it because... It worked. Drug use has gone down yeah. like hundreds percent. I think there's one drug that is like 98% decrease. And you're like, the fuck? And they're just, every, yeah. they're, they're mental, the mental health facilities are now, um, uh, are now run better because they're not overwhelmed. And like with your mum, all, all it takes is one time where, especially with certain drugs, where you can just be silly for a night and then that's your life and your mental health fucked. Uh, potentially there was an issue anyway, because of course there's genetics involved that it, it can skip. So if, if you have um, a genetic, de uh, uh, oh, yeah, they're, they're a genetic no issue that could, that could be, yeah. So that's something that could snap and, or, and you just give disposition it that little to bit be, of fire. Yeah. That's the word I was looking for, disposition. And you've just given it that little bit of fire <laughs> that the next person didn't give because they didn't go to a certain place. Um, that's that's when you know that's when we cause we cause issues from just something that simple but we don't even look into that we just kind of write people off we write people off who are homeless we write people off that are drug users we write people off that are mental health and all three of them come hand in hand because people that have uh, mental health issues may have taken drugs or people may have taken drugs and then had mental health issues people may be on the streets because of mental health issues and they may have mental health issues because they were on the streets they kind of but we don't, we never try and add things together and make it work together. We just kind of go, like I said earlier, that patches that, that, one, that cutter. Problem two, that. problem three. Yeah. yeah it's, and yet, like I say, in, doesn't Portugal, work like that. in Portugal, they've dealt with their, um, their, their issues with um, illegal drugs amazingly well. And their, their mental health facilities have done far better out of it because now what's actually happened is the money they were using overdoing with their mental health services has now gone into rehabilitation centers because so many people are going into rehabilitation because there's no longer a there's no longer a real need for anything else because no one no one's taking the drugs anymore because it doesn't matter you know that that little rebel thing in your head isn't there because what do you rebel against you know i'm gonna rebel and take heroin okay you can get it from the corner shop oh okay you know, and yeah. and the same thing and in Finland. Then you've got the other other way around where they basically start from day one of like, this is our education system. We're going to send you with packs for fucking education from day one. 
and then we're going to make sure that we follow it all the way through. So if we see any kind of issue in our schools, in our hospitals, in our nurseries, at home, we can identify it quickly and then we can act on it so that it doesn't, you know, we just don't seem to have got that balance. Like you say, it's, there's the first problem, there's the second problem, there's the third problem, there's the cookie cutter solutions and we're just not doing it. And then when we do try and do something by slightly integrating it by going, look, we're going to do this just ahead of those people that are a little bit ill. Then we end up with this bullshit kind of um, article where it just goes, oh, it's so radical. It's so shocking. It's fucking nuts. It's just what should be done not at the funny. bare minimum, the bare minimum um, that maybe we see some people that are suffering before those that aren't really suffering. So that's all we're doing. The people that aren't really suffering that are a little bit ill, they may be maybe a little bit higher than those that are really low down, but you know, chronic um, illness or something like that, that aren't gonna ha be a direct issue. Oh no, we can't have them losing out to people that are in direct issue. To not just, because we don't also know these people with mental health issues, they could be dangerous themselves or and others. Hmm. So, we deal with them first. Does that make sense? Anyway, um, I think we both had rants on different parts of the mental health um, things. But I mean, I think we both agree that this is a great idea. This is what should be happening. This is what should happen anywhere. Like I said, I think it should be a trial. I think yeah. we both kind of agree that this should be like, oh, that worked. Cool. Keep it going. Um, but I think our, our biggest yeah. problem is probably potentially the media um and just viewpoint in society the viewpoint that suggests you know man up woman at home you know that kind of bullshit needs to end and it's kind of the reason that we have these um you know stock reactions to simple things that should be happening anywhere and are in other places but there we go um thank you to everyone that's uh, joined us anyone that's still with us and kind of got past mine and tom's ranting um we will be back uh, next monday uh hopefully we will be back with either some twitch streamers or a games designer i'm really hoping we can get it sorted um, we're having to wait on the games designer a little bit longer than I'd hoped because the company he works for is owned by a massive company and they have to sign off on a few things. So I'm hoping we can get him. Uh, if not, I'm hoping we can get some Twitch streamers from America, Canada, UK to come and talk to us about the openness of that as well and how that's affecting the mental health. Uh, if not, I will find something. Um, anyway, thanks everyone for joining us um, and do have a good rest of the week. Thanks everyone.